Now I'll get into what you're doing in each of these stages, but let me just say, like you gotta have one, two, three, four, five, six. So look, check it out. My shades down, so I don't have to squint. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to kind of pick up where I left off because I went over and I kind of ran through this and hey, hey, here's what we do. Um, I want to break this down and I want to give you something super solid. I, I don't even want to go into all of this yet, but I'm going to get there. I'm going to show you exactly what you should be doing at this phase of your training based on when you want to peak in the whole nine yards. Uh, if you're like a BMXer, you really got to be fast all year round. Whereas if you're like track, you really can get faster progressively uh, towards you know the end of the year and, and peak at the end of the year. Uh, BMXers got to pretty much be fast as possible uh, most of the time. You could ratchet it up, you know, as the year goes on. But let's keep it real. Like you're like the the nationals start in January. So when do you want to be your fastest? You know, you don't want to get in the gate with. The, the number one guy and you're and you're talking about getting fast at the end of the year he's already fast right so uh, I want to make sure people understand the, the layers of speed because people don't understand that it's like a recipe you know so and speed would be like the cake it's the finished uh, product all right so I'm just going to draw some layers of the cake so people can kind of figure out what we're doing and uh, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get specific on how we're doing it at this point but I'm going to make sure you understand because this, I see people blowing this all the time, and it's, it is super important that you understand this. Um, when, you look at, when you look at performance uh, and speed, there are layers to this thing, right? This is going to need to be a little longer. There's layers to this thing. This, this one goes all the way across, right? This is the foundation of speed, right? So you have different attributes, and I'm going to show you the attributes of speed. The first thing is uh, mobility, okay? Uh, if you can't move, you cannot be fast. If you can move well and move fluidly, then you're gonna, you have the potential to, to reach your potential top speed. Uh, and it's very important because every person has their own, you know, potential, you know, that, 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 that point where you reach your genetic limit. That's what I was, look, what I was looking for. Most people never even get there, so don't even think about it because you would have to, you would, don't even worry about it. You're never going to hit it. Most people never do. All right, so the next thing is your stability, okay? Because think about it. Yeah, you can move well, and you're flexible, and you have mobility, right? Uh, but can you stabilize that mobility, that movement? Yeah, I got 180 degree turn, but when you do it, your hips fall apart because you don't have the stability to stabilize it, right? Say your hips move really well, and you got good cycling motion, but your trunk is all weak. It doesn't stabilize the pelvis, and what, what's attached to the pelvis, right? The hips. Your legs. So when your legs start moving, the pelvis start moving because your core can't hold any of it. You lose. You, you're not gonna hit your top speed. So that's part of the recipe. Okay. So next thing uh, is force, and most people never even talk about that one. Okay. Now I will. I will. I will put an asterisk beside it because if you're really not 13 or older, or have been under under the supervision of someone who's really been working with you directly, like I have. I, I, uh, a kid who went in at nine years old and he's, he's going to be on the bars early because he's already doing 10, 15, 20 uh, ring uh, uh, push-ups with a vest, right? I mean, yeah, like crazy. And uh, he can do pull-ups with vests. So he's, he's developing he, and he's on it. But anyway, um, enough of that. So force, what is force? Force is your ability. Like if I push this wall, this wall has more force than I because I cannot push it down. But when you are applying force at the greatest level of application, you're going to need four to five seconds. So I'll flash it in. When Nick pulled his uh, 330, go ahead and show it because it's still on the floor. When, when Nick picked this up just a few minutes ago, this is 335, right? Yeah. It took him about four to five seconds to make this lift happen. Now, if we put half the weight on there, he can pull it in half the time. If we put 30% of the weight on there, he, he, could, he, could, he can be clean. A second, yeah. Right, exactly. Clean, yeah. So back to the board. So here's what's important to understand. Uh, the weight that 30% of that weight that he could move in, in a second or less of a quarter second, he would be doing a clean, bam, right? So think about that. That the basis of your power, because that's the next phase, obviously, but the basis of, basis of it is force. Force has to do with how much uh, external force can you overcome, 
right? So that's 335 pounds of force. How much force does he have to apply to pick that up? He has to match it plus a pound. Else it ain't gonna move. I was just saying, uh, Low battery. yeah, no problem. Or it's not gonna move. So that's why we actually put this in for all of our advanced to elite folks because without that, you're gonna get on the gate, you're gonna get in the blocks, you're gonna get on the field, and you're gonna be running into people who have 300 pound squats, who have 400 pound deadlifts. So that the bottom line of all of their power and their explosion that leads to their speed is coming from here. Now, of course, having this and not having this is whack. Right? You're going to be in trouble. You're going to hurt yourself. Now, having these and not having that, you're going to pull some shit. <laughs> Beep. You're going to pull some boop. Right? So, strength. Uh, strength. Now, functional strength. Functional strength. How do you spell function? Functional. Right. Functional strength. But we got the little baby in the background, too. We chilling up in here. All right, look. <laughs> functional strength. Functional is when we take this force and we say, hey, Put it on the rings, let me see what you got. Okay, uh, you got a nice bench press. Put it on the ball, let me see what you got. Uh, oh wow, you got a good squat. Let me see what you can do on one leg. Let me see what that lunge looks like, right? So functional is when we start adding, you know, we start, we take that leg strength and we actually use it in a functional way so we can actually start to develop our body to you or, or develop our, our, our bodies to be able to use them in a way that is most optimized for our sport. So BMXing happens to look like it's all right here. <laughs> but there is so much going on in here just to keep it stable that you have to train the core to go in every direction known to mankind and be good and stable in every movement and be able to do it quickly just to keep your spine right in the middle of your rod, right? All right, so look, so now we go functional. Most people, most people, most people are probably most people aren't even doing any of these. Most people are going right here, right to this. This is what they ask me for all the time. Hey coach, I want, I need more power. Hey coach, I need more power. And I'm like, and when I start talking about this, they start going to sleep. Like you literally start to hear people snoring by the time I get to stability. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. uh, force, you know, you, you don't take somebody who's not working out and say, hey, let's get a bar and just start pumping some weight. Uh, they don't do that. But power, what is power truly? Power is when you take your force and, and the rate at which you can move the force and you put them together. So when you say force times rate equals power, right? So some people are really strong, lift this heavy weight, but they don't have rate. When we say, hey, uh, okay, fine, you got a 300 pound squat. Well, if we take 50% uh, of that weight off and you have a 150 pound squat, can you, do the, uh, can you do 10 of those and do one per second? Some people don't have the fluidity or the, the speed or the rate or the, the, uh, the function to actually move at that pace. Well, guess what? They're more on the force side. So you, they're going to be mashing themselves around the track or if they're sprinters, they're going to be this uh, landing on the whole foot or the heel. They're not going to be tip, tipping through on the ball of the feet with tenth of second uh, contacts, right? Just like when you're, uh, uh, if you're a BMXer, you're not the guy with the 240 RPMs. You're not the dude who can go, right? And, and bench press or, or uh, uh, squat 300 pounds, right? Me, myself, keeping it real. I got a 263 right here. I don't have a student yet that got, you got a 263? What? Uh, RPMs. No, you don't, man. Don't even go there. You're holding up the video. Yeah, but the point is, uh, I'm not boasting. I'm saying that I've developed that so I have a 263 RPM revolutions per minute. That's, uh, it's upwards of almost four revolutions per second, right? On the trainer. So, uh, on my squat. So when my squat is where it should be, it should be like a 275. So for a guy 150 pounds to have like a 1.75 ratio of a squat and to have a, a RPMs of 263, I put those together and that, that's, why, that's why I missed the horsepower. I'm just, not because I'm great, because I understood this. Be clear. So if you think I'm sweating myself, no, I put this in every athlete I work with. Nick is holding the camera, camera right now. Now he got this better than I do. His squats are heavier and his rate is probably getting close to where mine is. So I, I, I used to be able to hang with him to the first straight. That ain't gonna happen no more. All right, so look, that's power. So power, we gotta put uh, force and rate together to equal power. And then you say, okay, well, what would be left? The next one, actually, he used to race for a team by the, by the name of this. And I'm sure uh, John and Judy are gonna love this one because it's not speed, because you're thinking it's speed. Speed is uh -uh, it's velocity. 
Because here's what speed is. Speed is, is the, the, the quickness of a movement. Ah, like if I karate chop you, ha, that was, that was quick, that was fast. That's, people say he's, he's fast, he has speed. Now, nah, speed is the, the, the point A to Z, how quickly do you cover this span? So if you're a, if you're a track, that's, that might be 100 meters. If you're a BMXer, it might be, uh, what is it, 16, uh, like 1600 meters or something like that, uh, that I, you know, that we're doing, basically. What is it, 16? Now I don't know what it is, it's like 400, I don't care. The point is, uh, this, if, if you are a, 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 you know, looking for speed, you have to consider how much time it takes to get A to Z. So if you were a sprinter and that was 100 meters, uh, 10 seconds, you'd be, you'd be looking pretty doggone good, right? BMX, right? We might have, you know, I don't know how long your track is, but we're generally around 35 to 40 seconds. So the idea is how, but let's, let, let's call it what it is because we're talking about speed. We're talking about from the gate, A, A, to, A, to, A to Z, uh, your first race is pretty much from the gate to your 30 foot line, right? So about three to Let's four. really go there. When I came back, I measured mine at a, at a 2.05 and I eventually got it down to a 1.76 and then I, then I hit a 1.73. I measured my you understand what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it real. Why? Not because I'm planning on being a pro. I'm getting paid for it because I'm into this shit. I like it. I, the fact you can actually take this knowledge and, and make your body do this stuff here easily just seems and it just it pours out of you because you got it all stacked in. So this is the cake. This is what I'm talking about. This is the the performance cake this is the recipe now i'll get into what you're doing in each of these stages but let me just say like you got to have one two three four five six it's six deep real speed real real performance uh uh it has six solid attributes and you got to layer them things and and don't don't think that you can remove not one of these from the equation and if you super elite there's some other stuff in here that we ain't even talked about yet because what would really be down here Nutrition, baby. Think about it. What fuels all of that? All of that. So let me tell you, you can say you got all of this and you eat like garbage. You just broke all that down because guess what? This is right here. This is your cement block. You need to fuel your body. That's it. You got to fuel it. It's not just eating food. Fuel it. Why? Every single one of these steps require energy. And if you don't put it in, you ain't getting it out. And that's the end of the video right here. I'm proud of the